Ladies and gentlemen, I got a Radian Afterburner and Ramjet combo for my gun about two months ago. The Radian Ramjet Afterburner is some fancy marketing for a comped setup that you can put on a Glock. And they have them for Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5 Glocks. I installed mine on my Gen 5 Glock 45 which is the same slide length as a 19 if you can see it. And for those two months and darn close to 3,000 rounds, I shot it when I was demoing for students for my own personal training, all sorts of stuff like that. I shot it standing, I shot it kneeling, I shot it prone, I shot it from some retention positions. I did a lot of stuff with this. I think for the most part I enjoyed it. There was one gotcha, which I will share with you if you stick around. But let me talk all about this, why I would or wouldn't recommend it, depending on your circumstances, and uh, viable alternatives, maybe. But let's go through all that. I'm going to try and cover it real quick, I promise. I know that's a lot of material and a lot of topics. It's been an interesting little ride, so stick around. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me talk real quick about the packaging. I know nobody cares about it that much, but you get a pretty big box for the amount of material that uh, comes. One little teeny barrel, little micro comp, and even calls it a micro compensator on the packaging. But it's nicely packaged, it's securely packaged. So it's, you know, there's no fault when it comes to that. It also comes obviously with a screw and it comes with a bit to put that screw in. So it comes with everything that you need except for the gun and a torque wrench or torque screwdriver. So you will need those if you're doing your own install. I don't think I would do the German spec. You could probably get away with it, but when somebody gives me a torque spec, I feel like it's for a reason. So I use that, but the packaging is nice. Not much to say about it and I wanna beat that up. We'll move on. When it comes to the install, I did a short, I think, on installing this. Real, real simple, guys. I'll roll in some footage, but you just field strip your gun, take out the old barrel, put in the new Radian barrel, put the comp on the end, put the side screw in, and then you torque it down to 15 inch pounds and you are done. The entire installation, if you're going really, really slow, talking to some friends, watching TikTok videos or YouTube videos, will take you a maximum of five minutes, and that's if you're slow. Installs cake, guys. It's really, really straightforward and very simple. Uh, I feel like even if you are a little mentally challenged, the install's not a big deal. When it comes to the Radian comp setup, the Afterburner Ramjet, I feel like one of the big reasons you might be interested in putting this on your gun is because of the look. This looks really integrated into the whole package. It doesn't look like it was glommed on like my other comp on my um, Roland knockoff. That comp looks like it is something that has been attached by somebody and didn't come from the factory. But if you didn't know any better, you could look at this and go, man, that, that all looks like literally factory stuff. I think that it looks really, really nice. And look, let's not kid ourselves. I know that we all care about functionality, but a lot of us at the end of the day also care about look. And if you want this to look like OEM came from the factory, then the Radian makes sense in that regard. It really does. If you don't care about such things, then obviously it's not for you. But I think that the look of this, guys, it's super, super nice. Seriously, I don't know, is it focusing? Can you see that? Like, it just looks really, really nice. I think that people who don't know a lot about guns, if they're watching you shoot with this, they probably have no idea that you've got an aftermarket part on there. I think it looks really, really slick. I'm not gonna talk about the ergos, because there aren't any really ergos. I mean, if you put it on a Glock, it feels like a Glock. And that's probably a good thing, right? It doesn't really change the feel. and doesn't radically change the look of the gun. I should probably mention, and I didn't break it out into its own separate category, 
but it has fit into every holster that I have tried that a Glock 17 will fit into. That doesn't mean it's gonna fit in every Glock 17 holster, but the ones that I've tried, it has. But here's the gotcha. If you want to reholster with an empty gun and the slide locked to the rear on my Safari Land, one of my Safari Land holsters, if I try and holster it like this, the comp catches on it and it won't go in. So if your SOPs or procedures call for you to take a slide lock to the rear gun and place it in your holster, that may cause you issues. So that's the one gotcha that I have found with this. Well, there's another gotcha. Stick around for that one, we'll talk about it. But the gotcha, if you have to holster like this, slide lock to the rear, put it in the holster, it may stick. So just be aware of that. If that does, when you're in the holster and it's stuck, won't come in or out, just let the slide go forward, it will then come out. That is what I ended up having to do to make this work correctly. Just a little knowledge for you. When it comes to reliability, anytime you add parts, change parts, you always have to be aware that there is a potential reliability possible problem. Maybe, maybe not. So when I put this on here and I'm using the stock recoil assembly, I was worried because some of the ammo that I shoot is a little bit lighter. I realized it would probably be fine with full powered ammo, but I was worried with light ammo, will it run? So as of now, me filming this, I've put right around 2,800 rounds through this, uh, give or take, but darn close to 2,800 rounds in the span of two months. In those two months, the number of reliability, in other words, functional issues I had where the gun wouldn't pick up the next round or wouldn't fully go into battery or whatever, the number of those issues was zero. 2,800 rounds, every single one went bang, every single one of them ejected, and then fed another round, every single one. To include some very gentle hand loads that I've got that are 124 grain, but guys, if they're coming out at 1,000 feet per second max, I would be shocked. They just aren't coming out super fast. And this gun spits those out and keeps going with no issues whatsoever, zero malfunctions. Now, can I claim that when you, if you run out and get one of these, put it on your gun, will you have zero malfunctions? I don't know, but for me, this thing has been stone reliable. So stone reliable that I have been carrying it and using it at work for work purposes, all work purposes. I train with it, qualify with it, demo with it, do all the things, and I will carry this to save my life. That's, at this point, how confident I am in this combination. Took me 2,800 rounds to get there, 100% reliable. So I'm pretty happy with that. So anytime I change barrels, I always worry, what's the accuracy factor gonna be like? Is it gonna be as accurate, more accurate, less accurate? It's a concern for me. Some people don't care, but occasionally I shoot bullseyes at 25 yards. Occasionally I shoot further than that. So I wanna make sure that I'm not negatively impacting my ability to make those hits at distance. And so part of that is a good bench rest test where I shoot. In this case, I did a 25 yard bench rest group, five rounds, of federal HST 124 grain plus P. As I've said before, and I'll say it again, my number one favorite accuracy round in nine millimeter for Glocks, that is it. Somebody out there I'm sure can get in the comments and go, oh my God, that's not as accurate as blah, 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 or that ammunition's trash in my gun. Uh, guys, I'm gonna tell you in general, if you're gonna tell me that HST is trash in a gun, I'm probably not gonna believe you. At this point, I have shot a lot of it out of a lot of guns, not just Glocks. It's always run, always been accurate, and always been good. So, oh, and consistent in terms of muzzle velocity. Very, very consistent, lot to lot, round to round. So anyways, five rounds, 25 yards. Here's the footage. Now, 
Now I know that looks like two different groups, it sort of does, but the overall size of that group was just under two inches, 1.9 and some change. I uh, have it here with me, cut that out, 1.927 inch group, that right there. That makes it the second most accurate Glock pistol that I own. So capable of spitting a two inch group at 25 yards. And a two inch group at 25 yards, if we do the math, gives us an eight inch group at 100. And I'm okay with that. I'm very okay with that. It is, like I said, just as accurate, if not slightly more accurate than the OEM barrel, the original barrel that it replaces. So that kind of eased my mind. I was super happy with that. It did okay with Full Metal Jacket. Uh, here's a FMJ group. It was a 3.5. That's about what I expect out of a Glock with just bulk Full Metal Jacket ammo. Uh, that's expected, but not bad. It's still not bad. I mean, what a three and a half inch group at 100 is. I'm um, doing math, 714 inch group at 100 yards out of a pistol. That's not horrible. It's really not. Accuracy no no current concerns no worries it is perfectly accurate for this gun it's just as accurate as the oem barrel maybe slightly more accurate if you look at some of my other accuracy testing videos it hangs right in there it's good to go So let's talk about the compensator itself. Does it do anything? Is it really helping you or is it just for looks? I mean, it looks pretty, right? The barrel and everything, all the little ridges, the little little logo there, the Radian logo on the side, right? Looks, looks money, looks money. Feels money too in terms of cost. I'll get to that and whether I think it was worth it. We'll talk about that at the end, but does it do anything? So I shot this gun with the Mantis X and I turned it to the recoil meter so that I would get actual real numbers. And I compared it versus my Glock 17, similar length, no comp. The Glock 17 averages about 18.7 degrees muzzle rise when I'm shooting. So every time it goes bang, it's coming up about 18 degrees. This one, it averages right at about, let me check my notes, 15.23 degrees. The difference between them is about 3.51 degrees. And when I did the math, that was, once again, let me check my notes, 18.7% decrease in muzzle rise every round, round to round. And I tested these with 115 grain blazer brass, full metal jacket. That is not super hot ammo. I suspect that with warmer ammo, like 124 grain plus P, the amount of compensator action, i.e. the amount of muzzle flatness, would probably increase. But just with bulk ammo, boring bulk, cheap ammo, there was an 18.7% decrease in muzzle rise. You might be saying, well, 18 doesn't sound like a ton. It doesn't, but it's enough to where that dot really kind of doesn't depart the window for me, and it comes right back very nicely. So it's definitely doing stuff. You know, is it worth the, the scratch that you have to lay out to get that, in this case, I'll lay it out at the end and I'll, I'll let you make the decision for yourself with the factors that I'll talk about, but it definitely works. Like it is giving compensator action. Now, it's a single port or dual, dual port, but single chamber. There are bigger compensators out there, like the KKM comp, it's twice as big. Probably the amount of compensator action you're getting from that KKM is gonna be greater. I would expect it to give me a greater decrease in muzzle rise, but it's big, right? There's a trade-off. This is louder than shooting without any sort of comp, but I didn't find it to be onerous. I didn't find it to be bad. Now that's on the range with the Ear Pro on, but it wasn't too bad in terms of blast. And I've shot this gun inside a vehicle as well, and it wasn't too bad there either. Please, when you're doing that, do it lawfully and properly on a range and not uh, redneck style. We won't talk about that any further, but the comp, it works. Okay, this Radian setup is not without its downsides. 
There are two and maybe three if you want to go into the fact that it does add length no matter what. If you are trying to fit into a very small holster, installing this is not going to be appropriate. If you don't want to spend the kind of coin this thing commands, still not appropriate. There are cheaper comps out there by far. At the time I'm filming this, these are 400 bucks. And that's if you can find them because the availability has been a little spotty. I ordered mine last year uh, on back order and it finally came in at the very beginning of March. It's the end of April as I'm filming this. Cost, availability, greater size. These are all downsides to this, potentially. There's one more. If you're one of those kids that uses the Ford serrations to cock the gun, if you're not real careful, you can get pinched between the comp and the slide. And if it's coming forward hard with that recoil assembly, boom, that's gonna hurt. And I don't say this hypothetically, cause I did it one time. And one time was enough. It really was guys, it hurt like a bitch. So if you're a Ford cocking straight kind of person, if that's your jam, just be aware that it is entirely possible for you to get a little ouchy up here if you're not careful. So I would uh, try and avoid feeling the pinch. Quickly, I wanna talk about cleaning this gun. I'm not gonna go into depth. When I've got a comp on a gun, I don't take it off unless I need to because something's loose or I need to do greater maintenance. I'm not gonna disassemble this gun fully. I'm not taking this comp off. Heck, for all I know at this point, it might've just welded itself together and I'm gonna have to do something crazy to get it off. But that said, I'm gonna take this gun apart, field strip it. I'm going to clean the underside. I'm gonna clean the breech face and wipe down the inside of the frame. I'm going to lubricate where necessary, put it all back. I'm gonna run a bore snake through this and call it a day. If I'm feeling particularly extra, I will run the bore snake through it two times, but I'm not gonna get overly concerned about cleaning with a comp. It's just more trouble to take it off and put it back on than in my opinion it is worth. Maybe you feel differently. I've never been the spotless gun kid. I am the reasonable clean with a good amount of oil on it kid because I've never seen a really dirty gun stop working. I realize that you could probably get to that point, but I have seen a gun with not enough oil on it stop working. And owing to the fact that some of my students that I teach are um, in the no child left behind category, I get to see the lack of lubrication probably every few weeks. It results as you might imagine in the gun choking. And usually not choking when you're standing and shooting normally, but when you are shooting from a compromised position where you don't have as much grip, like say retention or kneeling prone, shooting around a corner where they're doing weird stuff with their wrists. That's where I see people have malfunctions, especially when they haven't lubricated their gun. And by the way, I didn't go into it, but when it comes to retention shooting with this, I did practice that some where you're shooting like this with a gun up against you and it was fine. I didn't blow my face off. I've done it with another gun. I, I think I showed you that footage in another video. But this, works. but this works fine for that as well. I can't swear to you that this will never ever spit out any debris. I can't promise that, but I've done this probably a dozen times now with this gun. Uh, I feel the air going past my face and that is all I have felt at this point. If anything, the more annoying thing for me as a lefty shooting retention is occasionally I get hit in the neck with brass coming out of the ejection port. That has been the most unpleasant part of shooting any of these guns from a retention position. And that's gonna happen with any semi-auto, not just a comped one. So who cares, not a big deal. Okay, final words, final words. This was 400 bucks for me. Nobody sent me this for a T&E. I get no special favors from most of the suppliers out there. 
If I ever do, I will certainly disclose it. But this was bought with my money for my purposes. The end, end of story. Yeah, I'll probably totally write it off at the end of the year, but that, that aside. And it was 400 bucks for me, 400 bones. As I've said before, there are cheaper comps out there. If you want a cheap comp set up, I could legitimately get you one for barrel and comp for probably in the neighborhood of 100 bucks. But it's gonna look a little less slick than this, right? You're gonna have threads hanging out, you're gonna have a, a screwed on comp, and so it will protrude. It will not look this nice, this clean. Like guys, this is a clean, clean look. I've gotta give it to Radian. They have engineered and put together a very nice looking product. And I know that the function is important and form is just form, but you've got to admit you like it when something looks nice. You've got to admit that. I would rather look good than to feel good and you know who you are. And there's a whole host of people who put stuff on the internet, Instagram, whatever, they want it to look nice. Well, this fits that bill. So if you want something that looks nice, then this is your jam. In addition, there are some people who live in freedom challenged states who can't have threaded barrels. This doesn't have a threaded barrel. This attaches by putting it directly on the barrel, just sliding it on and then screwing in that screw. That is it. So there's no threaded barrel to run you afoul of anybody's crazy laws where people started doing dumb stuff and the legislature got away with it. So if you live in a freedom challenge state, but you can still have a gun and you want a comp on that gun, then this may be for you as well. It fits in Glock 17 holsters and that's a plus. Some of those longer comps, you're gonna need a Glock 34 holster. And if you're carrying appendix at all, unless you're a pretty tall person, I don't know that that's gonna be pleasant just in terms of the amount of holster you've got in your pants. Now look, I know there's a whole pile of you guys out there carrying Glock 34s with full size lights on them and optics and big comps and you're carrying it all appendix. And if we don't do the exact same thing as you, then we're all a bunch of pussies. But guys, real world, most people don't want a super bulky gun. There's the whole like spectrum of how big a gun am I gonna actually carry? Because look, fighting with a big gun is fun. Shooting with a big gun is fun. Carrying a big gun is less fun, it just is. And so a lot of times we end up with a smaller gun, Glock 43s, Glock 19s, something like that. Or for those of you who are not glock o -files, SIG P365. There's a reason why there's 10 different variants of that gun. And it's a super popular gun because look, I give SIG a lot of grief, but they hit it out of the park with that gun. A lot of people carry it. Also, they just released a compensated version of that one, the X Macro. Hmm, there might be something to this. That aside, guys, if you've got a Glock 19 or Glock 45 and you want to put a comp on it and you want something that looks nice and you've got the actual money to spend on this product because look guys on a $500 gun or $600 gun putting another 400 bucks on it kind of almost doubles the price of it but it looks nice it works it works 100% it's accurate so I like it at this point would I do it again yeah I'll probably put one on my uh, Glock 19 at some point uh, funds and time permitting funds and time permitting my 19 is probably gonna end up with one of these as well that's how much I like it guys I'm not gonna make this video any longer. It's probably already gone long enough. It took me a while to get to the actual video because I wanted to do a bunch of shooting before I ever put a video together. I didn't wanna give you guys half the information, but right now I'm super stoked with this gun. Uh, like I said, I like it so much. I have so much faith in it that I will carry it at work and I have no qualms doing so. Guys, take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Get him, Jay.